Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Mr. Ray's Math Podcast. What I'd like to talk with you about today is integration. Particularly I want to focus on integration with a technique called U sub for short or really U substitution. So what U substitution is used for is if we come across an integral that we can't do in its form. Let me first give you an example of sometimes that we don't need U substitution. So let's say I wanted to integrate, oh, let's say x to the fourth dx. So this is an integral that I really don't need to worry about u sub because it's what we call a standard form. I know that if I have the integral of just a variable to a power, then that integral is going to evaluate to the variable to the one higher power, in this case one higher would be 5, divided by 5, right? And then of course we're going to add that constant of integration in because when we take the derivative of this, any constant here would just go to zero so it'll collapse. And we can check visually that if we take the derivative of this, the 5 will come down so they'll divide out. We'll have x to the fourth power plus zero, which is exactly what we started with there. So this is something that's called a form. You know, this is a standard that we know if we get something to look like a variable to a power, then we can integrate it. So what if we have a function that we're trying to integrate? Say it looks like this. The integral of x times x squared plus five to the fourth power dx. Well, that looks quite a bit different than that one. I think you'd agree, right? We don't have just a variable. We have a variable times a binomial here, right? This whole binomial is being raised to a power, and that's actually what's causing the trouble. If this binomial wasn't raised to a power, if it was simply x times x to the fifth squared plus five, we could distribute that x and simply turn it into two integrals as simple as that one. But with that power there, I can't distribute into that binomial. I have to first actually multiply that out four times, and I really don't want to do that. That'd be a lot of work. So instead, we have this technique called u substitution. So what we do is create a variable. We usually use u, but you can use any letter at all. And I say, you know what? What if I had this variable u, which is going to be a function of x, and I let u equal x squared plus 5? Right? So I'm going to take this piece on the inside and let that equal my u. And then what we do is we look at the derivative of u. Now, oftentimes, the next step a teacher will write on the board will be this. We'll say du equals 2x dx. All right. And you've likely seen that, and if you can get there, that's fine. I want to write the intermediary step, because oftentimes we skip it, but it's really going on behind the scenes. What's really happening here is we're saying this. If u is a function of x, and u is equal to x squared plus 5, then du dx, in other words, the derivative of u with respect to x, right, is 2x. So the derivative of u with respect to x is 2x. Well, if we multiply both sides by dx, then we end up here at du equals 2x dx. So that's an important intermediary step that I'd like you to be aware of, but oftentimes on the board, and even when we're doing the work ourselves, we'll simply go right from there to there. So what's going on here, though? If du is 2x dx and u is x squared plus 5, well, let's go back to this original integral. I can rewrite this. If u is x squared plus 5, then this piece here can simply become u to the fourth. Does that make sense? Right, u is x squared plus 5, so x squared plus 5 to the 4th is u to the 4th. I still have this x dx here, though, and I have to make sure that I've replaced everything from the original integral. Well, I could put a du over here, but if I put a du here, what I'm really doing is adding a 2x dx, right? Because that's what du is. So how do I fix that? Well, the way I like to do it is simply go to the original integral, and if I want to see a 2x dx, simply make it a 2x dx. Well, but wait a second there, Mr. A. How can you just add a 2 in there? Certainly you've changed the function now. Well, you're right. So if you caught that, that's good. I can't just put a 2 in there and leave it alone. But what I can do is multiply by a 2 on the inside of the integral and multiply by a half on the outside. So to just take you back in math a little bit, what we're doing here, if I multiply by 2 and then by a half, have I really changed anything? No, what am I really multiplying by? Just 1. So I needed a 2x dx, so I put a 2 in take the 2 out. But now look at what happens. This becomes u to the fourth du. So that's taking care of everything on the inside of this integral, right? u to the fourth is my x squared plus 5 to the fourth. du is the 2x dx. I still need that one half that's on the outside. And here's the magic of u sub. Now I've got an integral that I can do. It used to be this sort of crazy polynomial where I had a, you know, a binomial raised to a power times a linear function but now I just have a variable to a power. I can integrate that, right? What is the integral of one half, or well, one half the integral of u to the fourth du? It's one half u to the fifth over five plus c, isn't it? 
well, wait a second, I know what that is. If one half times one fifth, that's one tenth, right? U to the fifth, U is x squared plus five. So what I really have here is one tenth x squared plus five to the fifth power plus c. Right? So you see what's going on there? We started with an integral that we weren't able to do. We use u sub to transform it into one of the forms that we know, right? This variable to a power. And now this becomes exactly the same as the integral we did up there. u to the fifth over five, we have that extra one half multiplication factor in there, but that's just a scalar, it's no big deal. So now we have one tenth times u to the fifth plus c. All right, let's take another a look at another example here of a way that we could use u substitution. So what if I had an integral, let's say x plus four over x squared plus eight x with respect to x. All right, well this time, if you look at this, you might notice that if I take the derivative of x squared plus 8x, I get 2x plus 8. And that's not exactly what's in the numerator there, but it's a good start. So if I let my u equal x squared plus 8x, then when I take the derivative, right, again, the du dx, I'll, I'll write out that step again, du dx is 2x plus 8. So if I multiply both sides by dx, then I get du equals 2x plus 8. All right. And uh, let's see, so du is 2x plus 8, and again, this step we normally just kind of go right from there to there. Well, there's my u, and that's not quite my du, but it's half of it, isn't it? Right? 2x plus 8 is exactly twice as much as x plus 4. So I can use that same trick from before. If I multiply this by a constant, so now I've got a 2x plus 8, that's what my du is, but I've changed things. So since I multiplied by 2, I have to multiply by a half to fix it. And now I can rewrite this integral as one half the integral of, this is just one now over u, right? One over u, du. And that's one of the forms that you should recognize. The integral of one over u, du is just ln absolute value of u. So this becomes one half ln the absolute value of u plus c. And since u is x squared plus 8x, that just becomes one half ln absolute value x squared plus 8x plus c. And that would be the answer for that integral. So again, the idea of the u sub is to turn an integral that you're not sure how to handle into something that you know already. And let's look at one last example here. So if I have something, this is actually going to look a lot like the first one, but there's a subtle change that makes it a little bit more interesting to handle. So this integral looks a lot like the, the one that I had over here, right? This guy. I have an x times x plus 5 to the fourth dx. The only difference is instead of x squared, I've got just an x there. So let's try that same u sub we did. If I let u equal x plus 5, then du dx is, you know, just 1, right? So du, in this case, I'll go right to, is simply dx. So that's a pretty simple substitution there. Except what happens? Well, I can write that as u to the fourth, no problem. My du is dx, so that's going to become a du. But where do I get that x from? You see how it's kind of missing? So if I try to rewrite this, what I get is u to the fourth du, but I haven't replaced this x yet, so I can't move forward. So we need something to replace that x. It's going to come from right over here. If u is x plus 5, then x is u minus 5. Does that make sense? So I can write a u minus 5 right in there. And now I've got an integral with only u's and du's but I've moved that power off the binomial to the func to the variable by itself. So watch how I handle this. u, I can now distribute this u to the fourth into this binomial. This will become the integral of u to the fifth minus five u to the fourth du. And hopefully you recognize that that is really just two simple integrals to do. It's u to the fifth du minus the integral, minus five times the integral of u to the fourth du. So now we've turned it into two simple integrals. We can integrate sub u back in to get our answer. So that's integration with u substitution. The idea is to take an integral that you can't do and turn it into something that you can do. I hope that helps. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And feel free to email me if you have any questions.